maker of the heavens I am the bright and morning star I am the breath of all creation who always was and is to come I am the one who walked on water Come and see, follow me, you will know. I am the fount of living water, the risen son of man, the healer of the broken. And when you cry, Welcome to beautiful Savior Lutheran Church here in Plymouth, Minnesota, to our worship for this weekend. We are still celebrating Easter, and we're celebrating what's possible when you're joined to the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in holy baptism. And today in the book of Acts, Pastor Joe will be preaching on the theme, Seeing and Loving as God Does. And we pray you'll be blessed by his message and blessed by our singing, blessed by God's word. So... We worship together with that ancient Easter greeting, Alleluia, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, Alleluia. And we worship in the name of our God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Join us in singing. Casting my cares aside, leaving my past behind, setting my heart and mind on you, Jesus. I'm reaching my hands to yours, leaving me so much more, knowing that all.
Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Hallelujah. And friends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all today. And let us pray. Oh God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you that loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises which exceed all we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we continue with our children's message with Sarah Yanda. Hi, boys and girls. It's Miss Sarah. I just got done working in my yard and doing some planting. And I was wondering, do you know how to take care of a plant? First, what do plants come from? Well, plants or flowers come from seeds. And what do you do with the seed? You put it in soil, right? And what else do you need to take care of a plant? You need to water it and make sure it has lots of sunlight, right? Well, did you know that God makes sure we are taken care of too? He does. I asked some friends how their moms take care of them. Let's take a listen. Hey. Well, my mom takes care of me by doing my laundry. My mom takes, him, takes care of me by helping me when I'm sick. My mom takes care of me by did it for food. Make us do home, horrible homework. Make us do good homework. Thanks, friends. Moms really are special, aren't they? And they are a wonderful gift from God. He put moms in our lives to take care of us. But did you know what? God loves us so much, he gave other people a special job to do to take care of us too. Can you think of other people who take care of you? Maybe your dad, grandma or grandpa, an aunt or an uncle, teacher, babysitter, neighbor, friend. There are so many people that take care of us, that love us, and can show God's love to us. So I have a special job for you this week. I want you to think of two people who take care of you. A teacher, a friend, a mom might be a good idea, and show them extra love this week. You can do that by being super good listeners because you know what? Their job, your caretakers, the people who take care of you, their job is to make sure that you're safe and growing and doing the right thing. So listening to them, even when it's really hard, is so important to do to help you grow up the way God wants you to grow. And show them extra love by giving them extra, maybe a picture or a hug or something else to show extra love to two important caregivers in your life this week to help show them how thankful you are that God gave them to you. Will you fold your hands and pray with me, please? 
dear God, thank you for the special caregivers in my life. Help me to listen to them and show them love and respect. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye, everyone. And we turn our attention to the readings from God's holy word. Our first reading uh, is a reading from the book of Acts. So, Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly, I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he's Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee, after the baptism that John proclaimed. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. And the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. For they were hearing them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter declared, Can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to remain for some days. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. As the Father has loved me, Jesus says, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you, that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, so that you will love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, to begin, I want to reread part of our text for today from Acts chapter 10, specifically Peter's preaching of the gospel to the Gentiles gathered around him in the text. 
And then after that, I just want to ask one very important question, okay? So it says here, Truly I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead." To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. So there we have it. Peter shares the gospel, right? Jesus dying and rising for the forgiveness of their sins. That's how the whole preaching could be summed up. So here's the question. You ready? You see it there on the screen. There's the question. Is there anyone who should be disqualified from hearing the gospel? Now the answer should be no, right? And that's what Peter discovered shortly before our selected text. Did you catch that at the beginning where Peter says that he understands that God shows no partiality? That's an important turn of events for Peter because up until this point, the gospel was primarily being shared among the Jewish people. Now, it was spreading around the non-Jewish people, the Gentiles, at the same time. But Peter really only found himself associating with Jewish people because that's what you did. If you were a Jewish person, you wouldn't hang around the Gentiles, not just because they were from different places and, and backgrounds, uh, but because the Gentiles were considered unclean for many reasons, one of which is eating food that the Jewish people were not supposed to eat, like pigs and, and bacon and things of that nature. And so Peter kept the gospel there in the Jewish community, which was fine at that time. But it couldn't stay that way forever. And it wasn't going to stay that way forever. And God needed Peter to understand that as well. Which is why, in the verses before our selected text, Peter had a vision of a giant sheet brought down from heaven with all sorts of unclean animals on it. It's at this point we get this life-changing exchange between Peter and God himself. You see it there on your screen. It says, And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, By no means, Lord. For I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice came to him a second time. What God has made clean, do not call common. In other words, God told Peter to stop disqualifying people from hearing that gospel message. Because it's not a message for some. It's a message, a truth, a reality for all to hear, see, and experience for themselves in Christ. So let's go back to that very important question we asked at the beginning. This time, let's keep that question for our times here today. So you see that question again on your screen. Is there anyone who should be disqualified from hearing the gospel? What's the answer? No. Then why do we find ourselves doing just that, dear friends? Why do we disqualify people from hearing the gospel? Now, granted, we don't necessarily disqualify over bacon anymore, right? Eating pigs, things of that nature. But we do disqualify others because of their political affiliation, don't we? We disqualify others even because of their COVID stance. We disqualify others because of their economic status or even because of their parenting practice. We disqualify others because they don't agree with us 100% on everything. We even disqualify others because of their troubled pasts that continually haunt because of mistake after mistake 
after mistake. We literally hold back from sharing the gospel because of these reasons and so many more. But you know, it's not just the others we disqualify from hearing the gospel, is it? It's also ourselves. Self-disqualification. Because that seemingly large sin lingers in your mind. Self-disqualification because the shame you've been wearing tells you there's no way God could possibly love you after what you've done. Self-disqualification because you believe there is no way on God's green earth he'd want anything to do with you because of your troubled past and the myriad of mistakes you've made along the way. Dear friends, We know that the answer is no when it comes to the important question. And yet we still find ourselves here, in the place of disqualifying others and even ourselves from hearing that powerful gospel message. And so when we find ourselves in this place, we need what Peter needed. We need a life-changing exchange with God himself. Now, granted, I'm not sure this life-changing exchange is going to be just like Peter's with a sheet coming down full of different animals to eat, right? The closest you might get to something like that today is at a golden corral, okay? But that doesn't prevent the life-changing exchange from happening, does it? Because we have to remember it wasn't the vision that was life-changing for Peter. It was the gospel truth being shared with him. That the message of the cross and the empty tomb of Jesus isn't based on who we think is qualified or disqualified, worthy or unworthy. But rather it's for those whom God wants it shared. And that's everyone. That's you. That's me. That's the people of this world. Because Jesus didn't die for some. He didn't rise for those who really deserve it. He died for all. He rose for all. He died and rose for those of different political affiliations. He died and rose for those with different COVID stances. He died and rose for the rich and poor alike. He died and rose for parents of differing practice. He died and rose for those with troubled pasts that haunt because of mistake after mistake after mistake. He died and rose to carry for you and take on for you the biggest of sins and the heaviest of shames. He died and rose to show that even with what you have done, our God in Christ still wants you and wants to be with you, not just in this life, but in the life to come for all eternity. That's the gospel that was shared with Peter, and Peter then shared with everyone. It's the gospel shared with you. And now you get to share with everyone. And you know, on this Mother's Day, maybe start with mom. I mean, seriously, when was the last time you shared the gospel with her? Even just to tell her that Jesus loves her. Now, I wouldn't just tell her that. I mean, cards, candy, flowers are nice along with that. Okay, go for it. But just like the other things, don't let her being your mom disqualify her from hearing the gospel. After all, again on your screen, that important question, is there anyone who should be disqualified from hearing the gospel? The answer? No. Because Jesus didn't come for some. He came for all. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor, for that word from our Lord. And now I invite you, wherever you are, to join me in confessing the faith, the Christian faith which has been given to us in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before our Heavenly Father, who promises to hear us and to answer in steadfast love. You shower your church with grace, O God. Unite the whole church throughout the whole world so that with one heart your people will witness to the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ with power and love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You love us in Christ so that we can love others. Bless mothers and all who provide motherly care. Comfort those who miss their mothers, mothers who grieve, and those who grieve because they cannot be mothers, and those who have never known a loving mother. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You share the gift of eternal life, O God. In thanksgiving and remembrance, we recall the lives and gifts of those who now live in endless joy. Unite us with them in resurrection hope. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And I invite you to join me in praying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. On this Mother's Day, I want to invite you to join your hearts uh, with mine as we offer a special blessing upon all mothers, grandmothers, and those who provide motherly care. Uh, and for all of you who are watching, I wish you a happy Mother's Day, moms, grandmas. And this prayer is for you. We pray. God of all creation, pour out your blessing on all mothers and those who provide motherly care. You have made them in your image and given them children to love and care for in your name. Bless them with a heart like your heart, loving and kind, comforting and strong, nurturing and grace-filled. As they participate in your ongoing creativity, give them discernment to help their children discover their unique gifts. As they teach their children, grant them wisdom to know what is truly valuable. As they strive to share your unconditional love, give them long-suffering patience and a lively sense of humor. As they model your mercy, help them extend the forgiveness they themselves freely receive from you. In all circumstances, fortify their faith that they may love you above all. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, I invite you to receive the blessing of our Lord. Almighty God, Father who raised our Lord Jesus from death, lift you up and restore you to wholeness. Amen. Jesus Christ, the word of life, bless you and send you to be his witnesses. Amen. God, the Holy Spirit, who renews the whole earth, refresh you in the gift of baptism today and always. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Let's sing.
Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. Again, a happy Mother's Day uh, to all of you to whom that applies. Uh, we hope that it is filled with all the people whom you love and who love you the most. So now, go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Bye.